Good evening and welcome to the July 6, 2023 Recreation and Parks Board meeting. Veronica Johnson sitting in tonight for our chair and co-chair. We'll do a roll call of the board to my right. Glenn Larner. Dave McDonough. Mike Watson. Don, Don Lydon. Don DeGraves. Great. Okay, I think the first order of business is to approve the meeting minutes. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes? I make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Moving right along. So we have next on our agenda a update of the Leonard Hall Recreation Center. So Arthur wants to do an update to, for Leonard Hall, um, but you'll see under your agenda we have some photographs. Looks awesome. Um, those are retractable bleachers. Um, give you another picture of them actually out. Has anybody had a chance to go over and look at Leonard Hall since the renovations? No, I have not. Have not. <clears throat> Still have a few minor things to be done there. Uh, the sound system's good. Uh, that's what you're looking at. That seems like a simple picture, but uh, that's one of my favorite spots. Uh, you see how much more space there than as ever before. Coming in, we've offset the uh, arena, so that created the space. And then the um, dashboards, once again, they're setting at 90 degrees, so you don't have that 45-degree uh, uh, stud there. So much more space. You see the ADA accessibility entry level, the bleachers we're going to put hooks on the walls for wintertime coats and thus. Bam. Come on. That's amazing. Looks great. Clean is nice. Mm -hmm. yeah, looks really and you're going to see another one's real nice. We put some, uh, you see the yellow boards on the bottom. They didn't ship us the right ones or the company installer. So we just put them on today so that roller hockey pucks did not go underneath the uh, soccer uh, backboard when it's all the way out flush with the wall. The, the netting's very good, um, we like, and then we're gonna spend a little bit more money to make sure that's more taut at the top and uh, there. And that's a panoramic view of the same spot. It doesn't twist like that in there all of a sudden. We couldn't do that. That's just a picture <laughs> with that panorama shot all the way around and you can see the doors that go in with the fiberglass. But then um, if you look all the way across the arena and see those six squares or rectangles there you go Chris those you know are those old windows and we darkened those years ago because of sunrise and sunset on those sides so what we, we have planned we've measured those out and what we want to do is put our pictures laminate them on that core plast board and then put like the 18th green at Wicomico one of our uh, lighthouses the new gymnastics center and different uh, facilities all throughout, so it'll be six on that side of the wall and six on the other. So we'll dress it up plus market us at the same time. And then we do have our logo coming in, large logos on the dashboard at center court on the far side of the building. I think it, I think that's about all we have left is the new things, but it really the, the PA system worked well. I was there for opening day skate. We had like 80 there for the first day. And um, the PA system worked very, very well. You could hear the music plus one another and make announcements. That's great. Board members have any questions on any of that? Did you uh, lose any space in the arena, Arthur, to stay, stay the same way? No, um, the arena's the same size. We just offset it to create that space on this side. So it's closer to the wall on the player side, and it can be because that's just players' benches. And So that was a smooth move. It worked out. Thank you. Great. Okay. Next item on the agenda is staffing reorganization. I'm not sure I have any um, background on that. 
Well, I, no, and I didn't either that much, but I think I know what that's about because now, you know, we have a new deputy director. You know that now, and that's Jessica Hale. But since then, the uh, recreation division manager, we've filled that position, I was also within Sherry Nelson, who was our child care coordinator. Sherry has been doing a terrific job, and in the last month, she also found the time to get her master's degree in recreation, has her CPBRP, certified uh, recreation parks professional, and has done an amazing job, especially through the COVID period. So now we're still just backing, and we got to fill that one, and then who knows where that comes from. The other one is possibly talking about and was just put on the website today is a new parks manager. Those were two new positions. One was an FY23, one's an FY24. So that just July 1 came, and now it's being advertised today. That parks manager is going to be underneath, right directly under our current um, parks manager Parks manager, this is a parks manager one, and most of the job, uh, job duties are operations. So that's where we've grown the most. Uh, now working on these baseball fields and all that, uh, waterfront parks. I've told you before about 30 some miles um, that we share the Potomac to the Patuxent public landings, all the things there. And so shoring up that, so I'm very, very excited about the future because of that one position. That's going to make, that's going to change everything. Uh, training will be there, um, cash handling, technology. What's the name of the system? City, City Works. Works. City Works coming. All those different things, but somebody has got to be the hub and make sure in the executions, right? Ideas are, so, are great, plans are great, but that execution in this position is going to do that. It's, it's, it's not going to let anybody off the hook and make a job easier. It's what's needed as we keep moving forward with uh, risk management training and what the citizens expect as far as uh, athletics in our parks and our waterfronts and on our arts parks as well. Great. So, so we've added two new staff members or just the one position? Two. Two. One was in FY23, <clears throat> the, the deputy director that was funded through FY23. <clears throat> And then FY24 is a brand new one. Part so, one. so the one position was just a, a fill-in, and then the the other one is a new. Both are new. They're yes. both brand new. I, I, I get that, yes. Okay. So the, the next question would be from me mm -hmm. is that uh, besides the increase in staffing at <clears throat> the management level, has, has any conversation started or going forward in relationship to um, maintenance crew increases in staffing. Okay. And, I, and, and, and a follow-up question would be, if, uh, when was the last increase in maintenance staff? Full-time maintenance staff. We, until this deputy director came on, it had been over 15 years since we had any new staff. Nevertheless, in maintenance, maintenance has been probably 20 years. Now, so what, what, and so, and I appreciate you bringing that up uh, because it, it's needed. But so, what, what we did also too this year to add to that is we did get a forty-five thousand dollars for an hourly, not just one because it's seven days a week. The amount of hours in plus two, there's an off season, so there's forty-five thousand dollars worth of funding to keep somebody at Nicolette Park especially during the, the, the peak hours. Plus, it's, we, have, we have space there, so they're going to be housed there. They're going to have equipment, so you just won't be there having eyes on and supervising, but there's going to be that role. They will be aiding the parks by park clean, trash pickup, working on that field at Nicolette Park, uh, helping supplement staff to our splash pad and um, uh, tree pruning and all those other type of maintenance uh, so we're, we're very delighted with that. So let me go back to Mr. DeGrave's question, though. One of the reasons and one of the things about getting new staff and maintenance and FTEs, full-time equivalents, is, well, how do, you, how do you justify that? And so now this new position, what, one of the things is with data, being data-driven, uh, being the expert in the field, managing and seeing what I actually need and how that uh, computes to uh, enhancing your your service delivery, I think we'll be able to justify that over the next year or two of what's actually needed. With, with all the amenities that have been added mm -hmm. over 15 years, we're, we're really not in a position to start targeting particular parks and, 
and start looking at, you know, where staffing is needed to protect those assets? We, we are. We are. I, I'm, then the second thing you have to do is you have to sell the director, too. Uh, one of the things, because we do well with hourlies. We, we, that's, that's who we are. We, 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 we're getting ready to sh show that at Nicolette, and then we just showed it very well with our infield maintenance uh, project we had, doing those six parks, 16 fields, Monday through Friday, and some of the weekends. So, and then there, that, that's a very good savings, but certainly, certainly fully benefited, but there's a cost associated with that. You know that. So uh, I, could, I couldn't agree with you more, but at the same time, I have to make sure that my plan is, 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 is solid. So it's going to take a minute, but I, I couldn't agree with you more. So, so that being said, the staff that's being added is an increase in that particular budget and has nothing to do with the uh, enterprise funds that funds the staff uh, in the evenings, for instance, at the ball fields and, and the That's correct. football fields and every place else in the park. So subsequently, we wind up in a position where the commissioners are subsidizing those needs, which I believe obviously they should, but yet the staffing, uh, the increase in staffing at the maintenance level, I'll, I'll refer to it as, as Mr. Copsey's staff, if that's all right. Is that correct? That's fine. Okay. So, so that being said, there's nothing added there to help him in relationship to that maintenance. So obviously what I'm trying to draw out is the obvious I know to you, okay, at least I hope it is, that uh, uh, an increase in his staffing is going to help um, hold down those contributions from the, from the, uh, the different organizations mm -hmm. in relationship to fees and uh, uh, other things that are going to come up in the very near future, as you pointed out, as far as participation fees and, mm -hmm. and uh, not just player fees. Uh, because it'll put staffing into the park. The, the, other, the other point that I'd like to bring out or ask about mm -hmm. is right now, I, I believe that uh, we're probably looking at somewhere, I'll use a number of 60 windshield hours of travel time with staffing going between the time they go to the, to the maintenance shelter, then they go, they go out to the job, and mm -hmm. then they come back in order to check out again. So there's a lot of windshield time in there during the week. And uh, would it be practical to start looking at that windshield time, whether it's 50 to 70 hours a week, and say, okay, if we took one of these people and put them in, for instance, the Lancaster Park, and they knew what their duties were, uh, it's just an example, mm -hmm. okay, uh, what kind of benefit might that be uh, in relationship to cutting down and getting more bang for the buck for for lack of a better way of putting it, is especially that particular park where you have the passive park right next door and it could be a dual purpose from a supervision point of view. That, that's one that uh, Roy and I talk about a lot. Um, <clears throat> and again, I think with the new person that can that help and in, in not in the planning and the data and driving it all, because that that's been looked at a long time. So let's look at it this way: you have Baggett Park and Letty Dent. So if you had a if you had a place, if you if you could put park staff there, and that's where they report to, and then they're in the northern of the county. Dorsey Park would be another home base, and then Lancaster Park would be another, or Chancellor's where it is, and that those crews operate out of the parks. That'd be the first one to have central areas or three three areas where the staff comes and centralizes for those areas. But we have to investigate the cost, what that costs of all the equipment, your, your, your equipment, everything that goes with that group. So, but those are great ideas, Don, moving in the future. Well, the so biggest, those are the ones that need to be addressed. Yeah, the biggest reason for me to bring it out is we're, we're adding a lot of uh, assets to the parks. I mean, you know, we've got, we've got all of the uh, uh, turf fields now that, mm -hmm. that uh, don't, don't have somebody on site. You know, that's uh, over $8 million worth of assets in, in 2021, I believe it was, and, and everything else that's being added, uh, basketball courts, whatever the case mm -hmm. would be, playground equipment, and, mm -hmm. and there's nobody there. And, mm -hmm. and uh, if that's going to counteract the uh, um, concern about vandalism, uh, that that's uh, uh, happening, you know, periodically in different different areas of the park, and uh, uh, it seems to me it would be worthwhile to get um, an analysis to try to move people 
uh, budget-wise, uh, you know, into that, that Van position, and especially, especially saving that windshield time because people are going there every day or every other day anyhow, mm -hmm. and, and uh, it's costing us a lot of time. Yeah, and vandalism is a big one, so we want to we want to document that, and City Works will help us do that. What's it costing? Because sometimes, let me just speak to vandalism. Some, you you look at that, and somebody say, "Well, shorten the hours, don't do this or that," but then that's penalizing the whole public. And then we just then you find out, well, what's the cost of vandalism a year in the park? Is it five thousand? Is it ten thousand? Is that the cost of doing business at at twenty two parks? Uh, uh, you, you're you're not talking as big of a number as you think of the vandalism in a county this size that goes from Golden Beach to Ridge. So all that, that data-driven, and I think we were getting ready to be there. Plus there were a lot of priorities coming in, and, and we're just about there with the amenities, and you'll see that on this project update sheet. Thank you for the good conversation, Mr. DeGraves. Uh, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. I'm with you. All right, the, uh, I, I guess it's gonna fall under this category. Uh, I'm looking at the, let me look here real quick. Uh, no, I'll, I'll wait till uh, old business on project uh, okay. updates for that question. Thank you very much. Okay. Yep. Any other questions about staffing reward? All right. We'll move on to our next topic, uh, program fee increases. You have your fee page? I do. Now, these are inter enterprise fund fees, and uh, you can look at some of them and but let me just give you an overarching there. Most of it, most of it's done because of minimum wage, anywhere we knew we had to start getting fees in there. And plus, you, you know, you're gonna raise fees at a certain time every three years because of the cost of doing business and, and driving those up and, and making sure you have the funding available instead of a, all of a sudden at a reactive state or a high uh, rate. But most of it is, um, Minimum wage. You know, if, if we have the optimum, and what that means, if every hour that we, we budget to be open in an enterprise fund, it's not always that way because you don't, if, if you don't only have 30 participants, then you don't need the certain amount of staff or you don't have that many sessions and so forth and so on. But as for what we budget for this year, the increase in salaries due to minimum wage would be $233,000. How do you get that back? Well, fees. That's how you do it. And most of them being the school age sentence. Adult kickball, those are raised because of uh, field lights, uh, trips, to fuel and transportation, and the rest of it is just about most likely minimum wage or unless there was a cost. Sometimes you, in the gymnastics world, if you know next year you're gonna need a brand new $24,000 mat, then you start, you know, a couple years out, start raising a fee a little bit to catch up and get there to be able to make that purchase. Now these say proposed FY 2024. They've been approved. Okay, thank you. They're approved on May 23rd. It's gonna say. They're in it. If we are in 24, right? So, uh, may I? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So uh, the player fees are being increased from seven to 950. Mm -hmm. And the reason I bring this up is for, for the board's knowledge if they weren't aware of it and and for the general public which I think all the league leaders and stuff are aware that it was going to happen uh, I'd like to point out I believe this is correct that you, you stated that there's probably uh, about 40 percent uh, deficit in the uh, enterprise fund that that covers those those costs, mm -hmm. and that's part of what justified the 250, which right. is we a couple meetings ago we said that even doesn't bridge the entire cost. Mm, it could. Uh, so in other words, what's happening there that that makes that a, a not a definite don is that it depends on how long the seasons are, how much more people want to play. Uh, it's not a it's. It's not a definitive. Uh, that's what we noticed. That's how it got out of balance, is that before the turf fields and before COVID, you could almost guarantee the schedules how many people put in the park. So we, we minimized the budget. But now, going year-round and, and playing and, and being all these new amenities, we have a lot of people. Plus, public safety has driven up since we started in 2018. Uh, what we think, where we thought two people could handle a certain park, it's taken three to four. 
Well, that's, that's exactly what I wanted to bring out because the length of the season has really created a bigger deficit. Mm -hmm. And subsequently, if the seasons would have remained the same, uh, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't have been in that problem, perhaps, to raise the fee that much. Mm -hmm. It would have been some type of, a, of an increase but to, because of minimum wage, but maybe not in total. So that was, that was the whole reason why I wanted to bring it up. Thank you. And, and let you know, too, that uh, still the commissioners did put in, um, is it 65000 this year? Which I would have looked at that. 65000 more for our deputies to be in parks at certain time, whether it's tra Little League open day for traffic, uh, whether it's uh, football games, any other type of game, sporting events. Uh, this past, the 4th of July weekend, now we have uh, deputies at Myrtle Point Park. That's when we have to because boats can come, but that is paid out of the Enterprise Fund, 90% of that. Thanks for those comments. I had a quick question uh -huh. on this increase. It looks like the turf spring uh, field rate the full field is $80 per hour, and the half field is $75 per hour. If I'm reading it right, it looks like the half field rate went up by $25, but the full field rate didn't go up at all. What was the thought behind that? That seems odd. Well, the, ha the half field rate is a, is a higher commodity. In other words, that's, that's the more popular way to get that field because most don't play that full field. That's a, that's a tough pitch to go a regulation soccer field. Okay. So even adults, uh, they'd want to play, but they'd want to reduce the size of that field. And yeah. most of your, and a lot of your soccer play, that, 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 the regulation field is the minimized, and that's the value of, of being able to play soccer on turf fields is really getting two fields out of one. So is that the same rate for practice on the fields? Because it seems like if it's only $5 more to get the full field, why wouldn't you take the full field rather than the half field for a practice rate? It's only five dollar difference. Mm -hmm. Let me look at that. And remember that right now, those rates, those are for adults. The seven dollar player fee is what the, the the youth pay. Okay. They they're not paying that fee. Okay. That's an adult fee. But do you understand, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that's that, why I'm writing that down. The discrepancy between the two seems to encourage someone to take a full field. Or I think, you know. Well, the, the, my understanding is that that. For instance, and I guess I'm going to use the term all parks, but I'll talk about a regional park, just as, that those fields are open for anybody's use up until programs start in the evening. Is that correct or incorrect? Except for not the turf fields. Not the turf fields. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I would, I would. Now, so, so let me map, maybe I must spoke to it. The turf fields, we have field number two open there because we have staff on site. That's how, that's how we can do it at Chancellor's. But at Chaptico and uh, Lancaster, no, they're not permitted on the turf fields. Okay, so so what you're saying is turf fields are permitted at Chances Run? Field two. Right, yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that, that was my understanding mm -hmm. and what I had seen. So, uh, but the access to the public is not there any place at all during the day at any at Chaptico or any place Correct. else. Correct. Okay. And the reason for that is? Well, there's objects brought on the field, there's fluids brought on the field, all those things that need eyes on what's going on on that field and those turf fields. Okay. Which pets, <laughs> the whole works. Okay. Which, again, takes me back to mm -hmm. full time staff at the parks mm -hmm. where, where that usage could be in there. Sure. And then we also, but also people that want to have them at those off hours, they, there, there are rental rates for those. So let me say that it's not just, a, there are rental rates. For those off times that if you're not participating in a uh, youth sport so I believe I believe you just mentioned a minute ago about uh, uh, kickball and uh, uh, you yeah. happen to talk about you know light fees and obviously that's a favorite subject from this board member uh, so there has been no analysis based on everything that's going to happen in relationship to light fees for 2024, I guess we're talking about? No, no, because they're, they're, we haven't had any delays put on to make that analysis. Uh, we don't even know what it looks like with our retrofits. We still, those are still coming. Um, I was hoping they'd be close to here, but they're not. Those two fields at uh, 13 at Chaptico and field number one at Dorsey, those will be our two test sites. Um, 
I believe it'll be this week coming or the following week. I talked to Kyle today that Musco is coming in to meet with us about those delay switches. Okay, so uh, so the so the delay switch conversation that's going to happen is going to be in the poles or in the uh, breaker boxes. I'll call yes, it. Yes, that, that's that's the. Yeah, that's text. still forth going. I'm I I I, I want to hear good news about that so we can move forward. Right. Uh, what what's the intent of of uh, of how fast that can move forward financially? Money's available. So money's available to move forward for it. So we could possibly see those systems in prior to the busiest time of the year uh, going into, you know, October, November, so on. Okay, so let's make sure we're on the same thing. We're talking about the, the delay switches. Yes, we're talking, actually we're talking about the effect that they're going to have on the light yeah, bills. Yeah, the, see in the, so what, we have four hundred and. $50,000 in the retrofits. So that would come from that allocation. Oh, okay. So that money is built in already. Mm -hmm. Is that built in for the LED systems that are already in the parks? Meaning, let's say the uh, di the uh, turf field that's LED right next to the Loeffner Center. Is there money built in to, uh, to, to turn, uh, to use the uh, delay devices in order to cut down on those. Fields yeah, well, we cost. think we can get about. Mo we think we can get about most of those, mm -hmm. and that's why I'm waiting to hear from Musco. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the plan would be to do everything, including the ten fields that, or ten or eleven fields that are already LED, so that we can get the light bills down in those that's fields. Right. Also. That's right. Okay. And Thank wait, you. And, and, yep. Thank you for that. Okay. Any other discussion, board members? I have just one question, Mr. Shepard. Uh, uh -huh. The seven now nine nine fifty, I think, it, player fee. Mm -hmm. and that's for the turf field. Is that also for um, for, for youth? Is that yeah. is that also the the same um, fee if they're using Leonard Hall or Margaret Brent Recreation Centers? No, or, the, these are those fees are that seven and nine fifty. That was a player participation fee that came in in two thousand eighteen. So if you have a 500-person uh, league, and last year it was, I can do a quicker math this way, last year at $7, it was $3,500 that league put put in for the use of the fields. Okay. But they would be subject to the resident or non-resident fees that are listed in the chart. For Correct. But that's, but that's a difficult one yeah. because the, some of the teams at different locations have both within their team. Understood. Thank you. But if a team that came in and they were non-resident, like would they would come in want to use a turf field at Chancellor's Run and they were right. available, the rental fee would be as a non-resident. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Great discussion on the program fees, and I think we'll all be looking forward to hearing how your Musco meeting goes. All right. Project updates. Okay. Let's go. Uh, Chrissy, I'll, I'll get you in here in a sec, okay? <laughs> Lancaster Playground, we um, we had put that in in FY 2021, but because of the lease, you know, the lease in the um, La Lancaster Park did not um, include, a, as it was called formerly, a tot lot. So we've been the last couple of years having discussion of that as well as the lease. The lease expired at Lancaster Park just last week a week before on June 30th. So to get that, so to get that, as we work through that lease, the Navy agreed that we could put a new, we could put a playground in there uh, under this exact same footprint. That playground now, it's our first, it's our, it's going to be our largest for all accessible needs. And, and why don't you explain them what that means for accessibility there. And then I'll go around and go back to talk about um, the money. So the original playground there was a Maryland Boundless Playground Initiative. So it was built with, at the time, inclusivity was very much novel in playground building versus it being accessible. So there's two things there. It's accessible, but it's also inclusive. And although we strive for that at all the parks, this one will be above and beyond. It'll have more pieces of equipment 
that promote accessibility and inclusive design. So then you see your twirl of whirls, you know, the old things we used to swing on. Um, there'll be one there, but it's ground level, so a wheelchair can pull right up into it. Um, all of the structures are ramped, there's shade, there's more accessible swings than at most parks. So it truly is, although we're accessible everywhere, it truly is the accessible park to go to, especially for groups. Um, there will be more things for people to do at the same time. And because we um, now, the entire playground is going to be rubber surfacing. There's going to be fencing there. There's going to be shade areas there. What else was, and the, and the cost of the equipment. Now, what's going to be there? Cost of that larger size accessible playground with all those amenities, Lancaster Playground is going to be $750,000 playground. So we went to the commissioners and used program open space money to get the additional money, and they approved that last week or the week before. What's the target date for the installation of that? This fall. What's the plan to get that out to the public so that other areas of the county are aware that it's like an increase in uh, ADA amenities? That's the way I'm hearing mm -hmm. it, correct? Yes. And let me let me tell Chrissy, too, because of the transition plan and all the other things, all of our playgrounds now, you just – you can see the difference in the um, accessibility, but this is going to be different. So we will on our constant contact, contacts, all our social media, Facebook, as we get closer and announce and when that's ready to go. We cut the, um, the PO process for the park uh, to get that done, and we're, we're excited about that Lancaster Park playground. I know I am. It's going to be an excellent addition. LED light retrofit, uh, that's mine. It shouldn't say Dorsey Field 6, that's on me. I just explained that the retrofit project is on its way. Um, community gardens at Lexington Manor. We have an MOU where we're working on the details with the uh, Community Development Corps of Lexington Park, Corporation of Lexington Park. Infield project irrigation. We just about all of those uh, six parks, fit, you know, 5th District, Baggett, Chancellor's Run, um, Come on, Dorsey, Lancaster, we put in irrigation, not irrigating the whole fields, but we're having hose bibs and water so we can water the batter's boxes and the pitcher's mounts. Nice. So we're getting there with that, which uh, I'll just wait my turn. And pier and, and landing improvements, we're getting ready to announce that Bushwood Wharf is going to be, starting this week, is going under repairs. It's going to be very nice uh, repair for their Cardinal Gibbons playground replacement will be in the spring of 24, Chris, right? Yep. And, but what's been done there, you'll see that in a minute about the courts, tennis courts, pickleball courts, and basketball courts at Cardinal Gibbons. We're going to have funding in FY24 to improve and Nicolette and, and some new there, as well as the new skate park at Chaptico Park coming this year. Three dog parks, one at Dorsey, seven the 5th District parks. Dorsey Park field upgrades, uh, that we, that one field there, because there just wasn't enough room for all those sports there put some LED lights and now the um, uh, grass, and a, but it all attached to that well that was there for the restroom in the football field area. New restrooms at Chances Run. Chris, you want to speak to that, please? I'm giving you all the good news projects. Great. So I am <laughs> hoping our permits will be approved no later than next week. And the, con yes, right, construction is ready to go as soon as those permits are issued. So um, we are very, very close to breaking ground. Uh, gymnastics Academy. I knew I saw that as one of the uh, items. Well, the um, the Gymnastics Academy, the notice of, to, of award, ten award to the contractor uh, came out today. So our contractor knows that that uh, award's coming to be funded for all the renovations. And then lastly, I believe next week we'll go to closing on that project. So you get closing, you have the intent award, and now we've got a get some uh, permitting done because we need to be in there in September. Okay, that was going to be my next question. Mm -hmm. September. Okay. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to be fantastic. It's going to, you know, new office space, viewing areas, cameras, uh, painting, uh, restoration, but it's going to be nice uh, and then safe, the storefronts as you come in to keep it safe uh, for the um, athletes. Okay. A lot. Go ahead, Chris. 
Okay, so sports complex was one of the items that was specifically listed out um, for discussion. Um, I have had discussion with the Maryland Stadium Authority to start a level two study. Um, and on this slide, you'll see what that actually means. It is to include a high level concept plan, geotechnical, environmental, archeological, and site constraints and risks. Um, the piece of property that has been um, slated for the sports is, remind me the name crossings. of Crossings, the crossings. We did show that one time mm -hmm. previously in the meetings. Um, so as of this, you know, the end of June, the stadium authority is putting together a proposal that we will give to the commissioners um, that will have a cost associated for those types of um, studies for the project. And then the commissioners um, will choose whether or not to move forward and send a letter of uh, commitment. And remember so, the crossings is on route, you know, St. Andrews Church Road just straight across from the entrance to the estates mm -hmm. st andrews or test states okay. give you an idea so that's good and we talked to um, uh, mr tyler and also gary mcwiggin gary was the one that sat at the table when we did that first uh for tournaments here and analysis economic study he was there part of that so it was good to hear from him again and we're moving forward to get this phase two done when May I? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that, uh, would you expound on that more as to who handles that study and how that works? Okay. I'll be, and the reason I'm asking you that is because I believe when the turf fields were put in that uh, there was a lot of conversation about how they were, well, I don't want to use the word a lot. There was conversation about how it would allow organizations to bring tournaments to the area and much to everybody's disappointment that hasn't happened. So um, I'm curious as to how that evaluation works for any sport, uh, that how, how that would actually bring that income into the county. Well, well part, of the, part of the report was some um, pragmatic uses or, or ways to get tournaments here, you know, the different one, two, or three, four styles of doing it through contract. Uh, a local department, leagues, and those things. And those are the things that people in this industry are used to doing. Now, whether somebody gets in to make that happen is a different thing. So what that first study, that was a e um, market and economic study, and it came back that, that St. Mary's County was a viable place to have tournaments. That was, that was number one. And then now how that happened, they, they didn't direct any money or funding or any resources to say, let us help you with that but that was just a study that was a like here the study wasn't i can't remember the cost of that one now here what will happen is we're going to come back and once they're seeing what we're looking here they're going to say hey this is what it's going to cost to do that you have one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in your hand from a bond bill commissioners it's going to cost you a certain amount of money do you want to send a letter and say let's move forward and allocate the difference in the amount of money if it's more and then that's what will work. So then what will happen is you're talking about phase two of a sports complex is, okay, what's feasible there? Can the, is, is this particular site a site that would work? Some of the costs related to getting that site developed, ready to go, and uh, all the particulars there. Then that's when you go to that next level. Then the commissioners decide, well, okay, that's it. Uh, maybe we get some cost, some uh, not uh, tighten down costs, but some costs there, estimates, proposals, and say, hey, let's move forward and start bringing in some money into the budget to have a sports complex in FY 2028, 20, whatever that number is. So what I think I just heard you say is there's already been an analysis that this market could support mm -hmm. that, that type of. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's yeah. Uh, and and the re again, the reason why I ask that is, is that at least for two years, we haven't been able to bring any tournaments to, to the county. Mm -hmm. At least in that particular level, I'm not singling out soccer. I don't want that taken because right. I, 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 I'm aware of the challenges of demographically how projects are brought into an area. We have to leave the county and and mm -hmm. uh, where I'm a stakeholder out in American Legion baseball 
we have to leave the Anne Arundel, to Anne Arundel County in order to host these types of tournaments uh, based on demographics. And so uh, uh, that, that's the reason why I bring, bring, bring that question up. And, and I guess I'm going to use the word challenge it to some degree as to, as to how it happens. The, the other thing is in, in looking at the, the soccer situation is the amount of time um, I believe this is going to be correct, that, that the amount of uh, tournaments that are gone to outside of the county into a, I'll call it a centralized part of the state, and where other parts of the state has to gravitate to those two because they have the similar uh, demographics that we're in here in this county, and they sort of gravitate to those middles, you follow what I'm saying? And, and subsequently, that's where all these big complexes are at, at least in this state, in mm -hmm. relationship to, you know, 10 fields and that type of stuff, you know. Uh, so um, that's, that's the reason I'm a little surprised that, you know, that that analysis is there, uh, uh, to, be very, to be very honest. So uh, regardless of what goes into the complex, and it's not that I don't want to see those amenities in the county, uh, the other concern is whether, uh, is there going to be um, uh, staffing uh, brought forward to, uh, uh, to sort of be a full-time position or more than one position just to try to get those things happening in the county to, you know, to support, to support that expense. I, th I think that's one of the things that will have to be discussed, the operation side. Now, so let me just go back a little bit about the sports complex. Well, now we don't have a sports complex. We have turf fields, but we don't have a sports complex. But what the decision was made, and, and, I, and I would say I was there on it. I'm not um, – we – to get turf fields here, and I like the way we have it now because geographically we're in good shape where they're not all on one spot. And now, since public schools comes on board, again, you have between Leonardtown High School and Great Mills Link and that little uh, radius there, you have six turf fields and uh, right there. But some of the amenities aren't there, like meeting space, you know, uh, inclement weather, uh, getting out, uh, uh, tournament information, uh, concessions, uh, 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 a point of entry for charging. High schools, you do have all that. But yet, so the, the trade-off was a little bit, but we'll take care of the abilities to have tournaments, but also have geographically our families that are currently using fields having to do them. So the question boded was if we put one at that time at Chancellor's, on St. Andrew's Church Road at that time, would uh, that serve well for the northern county? Would they get the use out of that we're willing to travel on a regular basis? But now, but so then, but I, I think I've been talking with some, there's still some tournaments there. And one of the options is, and would be for me or for a department, is that you hire someone to run the tournaments. Contract. There's, you know, you contract someone to run the tournaments and you get into a cost share with that. Um, and then, then that, that could even mean for us, but it will still, if we go, if you go to a uh, one spot, you are going to have to have staffing there. And that's what we did what, in the 90s, Don, with uh, – that's why Mr. Bailey's there uh, and other staff is at Chancellor's because that was a, supposed to be a kind of little league type of place where people came in and played the high-level games. And we've always had full-time staff in that one park, the only park. But we've had it there. Yeah, so, I so, I, I, so, so staffing, staffing would be a major one. They have to be able to discuss operational costs. And, and, they, and that was brought up in the last uh, study. I think part of the problem that we're, is an, an example is like with lacrosse. So my grandson's involved in it. I've been dealing with it now for a couple of years. I even talked to our guys here in the county. And in the Southern Maryland League, they play the tournaments in Bowie because the person that runs and sets up the schedules is up there. Mm -hmm. Because the question I asked of several of the different leagues was, you know, St. Mary's County has five in the 15 and under, had four teams in the league. Calvert County had four teams. Well, they're playing up in Prince George's County. They had two. But it's because the league and the way they're set up and the people making the decisions are just staying there. 
And it's not because we don't have the facilities. And the question I was asking is, why aren't we doing it down here? Because we've got the facilities, we've got the, the fields. And mm -hmm. the answer is the people making the decisions are up there and they're not willing to come down here. Yeah, so how, how, then how do you crack that nut? And that's the problem. But then, like girls lacrosse, Mike knows it's down here mm -hmm. because the person that runs when it lives down, down here. Lives down mm -hmm. there. Mike's. Remember your mic. Yeah, and then then you then you you know let, let's be honest too. You look at the revenue side. If you're if you're in, I'm gonna use your, um, so I don't use yours. If you're in Bowie and your revenue's here, and somebody can't promise me a gate and all this to come in here, well, why would I move? Right. So th those are all the things that have to go in there. So here, you're gonna have to find a. We're gonna have to find a special way. Uh, the department would have to negotiate a good contract if we went that way, so that it's profitable, so it entices people to come here. And then we all say, once you get here in the fields we have in the area we live in, you'd you'd come back, or would they not? And that that's the whole thing. Can we can we get them back? The odds are, I would guess that in this particular case and many others, that uh, obviously. Couldn't be positive of this, but I'm sure at a lot bigger percentage. You know, there's there's a lot of financial reward there for coordinating all this stuff, regardless of what the particular sport is. And subsequently, again, that's why I bring out the, the demographic is closer to bring in a bigger audience. And that's my big concern in relationship to what I remarks already made, that that, you know, basically here. If you stayed here and played lacrosse, you're playing within, I'll use the term, the smack area, where to leave that for more competition, you're going into other parts of the, of the state. And subsequently, just to get tournaments here or Calvert to come over here for a tournament and that type of thing, they, they might be little sidebars type of thing, but to go to the big events, you're going to need to leave to bigger areas. And that's why I question what kind of draw you're going to really have. The only kind of draw you're going to really have is to take the money out of it and make it cheaper for them to come here. That's my own, that's my own opinion, okay, that, that, mm -hmm. that that's what you're going to have to do in order to accomplish that, that particular goal. So Entice one way or the other, and it, it, you know money is one of them. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, went, I ran into just a little remark here. I ran into a guy a number of years ago in Florida that lives in Connecticut, Okay, and he was down to Florida for two weeks, okay, doing, doing a tournament, big multi-field complex, and he's been doing it for years. And he puts this thing all together at his residence in Connecticut, okay, because he pays for that facility down there, and he's been doing it for years. So uh, that's the kind of thing that goes on, and there's nothing wrong with that. Entrepreneurism is where what makes things go around, but, you know, that's, that's the kind of thing that you – you're going to be challenged with in relationship to do this. I'm not against doing it. La my last remark is that I don't want the perception given that I feel that soccer has done a bad job. I think it's a great program. Uh, it was my favorite sport uh, as a youngster, and, and uh, I have nothing against you know what has been done in relationship to those fields. Uh, if anything, I think I think it should be more, <laughs> more of them. But anyhow, come on. Okay. Mr. Shepard, I have a, just a quick follow-up or question. I think I might know the answer to this, but um, do more like rec and park coaches or more like travel elite coaches host tournaments or go to tournaments? I would think the latter, correct? Correct. Right? Travel. So like, I, I think like, like travel coach, like again, we have the facilities here. We do. Like I think travel coaches, select coaches, whatever it might be, whatever sport it might be, they have to want to host a tournament as well. I mean, it, it's a lot. Of, as you all know, it's a lot of work. I well, mean, well, that's where we, that's where I think we are, right? I mean, a lot of our a lot of our teams have been going out of county for years, right, to play in tournaments, and they hopefully have have those connections with the teams that they play in those other jurisdictions, and to to reach out to those teams and set a date and say, this is our tournament, this is what it's going to cost for your team or your multi age level groups to come and play. Um, it, it's, it's it takes a lot of work. Um, so I think, you know, we now that we do have the facilities and we're still kind of young, I would say, in, in the age of our facilities here with um, the, the turf fields and things like that, that would uh, lend itself to uh, tournament play. Hopefully our, our coaches are going to get into more of that, like that they want to host. 
um, that they want to take that on. And if a position, as Mr. DeGray stated, and you stated that uh, potentially would be down the road that would help support that, I think that would be a wonderful thing. Yeah, some of it would because see some of that revenue would go to supporting the um, the complex, so that would be that'd be a win for the county. Then the other ones, it would, it would have to be an entrepreneur, I believe. Yeah. Because you're right, leagues after they deal with their own league, that's enough for any volunteer. Yeah, absolutely. And tournaments, I know what it's like for us to go to ho looking forward to hosting gymnastics meets. Uh, our our um, boosters club for gymnastics, they they're reworking things out and to get that vitality back. So uh, that's what I'm looking for now as an entrepreneur that you hand that package to with, with all the guidelines there and the MOU that, and the contract that works it. And then you have that financial. And it's, for them to do it, it's going to have to be in their favor too. Right. And then, but it also will enhance the county, uh, offset some of those um, operating costs. And as you know, I mean, my, my, my daughters play for the Eliminators, they play field hockey. And so I, I've seen play dates, not necessarily tournaments. So I think at least that organization is heading um, down the road of maybe trying to host tournaments, overnight tournaments that would bring in revenue from hotels and restaurants into the county um, in, in the future. But I've seen them host Virginia teams and you know Howard County teams and Montgomery County teams um, down on your fields at Lancaster, personally, um, as, as more of play dates. But um, I think it's at least starting and heading in the right direction. Good. <clears throat> going to go over Lancaster Park again? <laughs> well, there are some pictures in here of the playground, so I didn't scroll by them. Um, Did you have a question about yeah, Lancaster Park? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, but we were talking earlier. Could you kind of explain to us what this lease process and all this stuff with the Navy okay. is? Right, let's start from the beginning. 1998, 25-year lease got us into 23. Uh, I remember... Um, Phil Rollins and myself, we were down there with the first shovel with uh, Congressman Hoyer, Navy property. Just that was that was the beginning. And then you go through the Navy, and we've we've enjoyed a great uh, lease with them. But now, what's happening is the days move forward. The a uh, couple ways the Secretary of the Navy is involved now. We only signed a one-year extension. Anything above 10 years, those multiple years, the secretary needs to be involved of their properties. So there wasn't timing for that. So NAVAC, the real estate for the Navy in D.C., calls and says, let's get a one-year extension. I said, but we still need that playground. Well, we'll get a one-year extension and also include in there that you can have the playground there on the same footprint. So that was good. But then the next thing came about was, you know, uh, we needed $15,000 for an appraisal. We want to appraise the property there. Sorry about that. We want to appraise the property to see some value and what the value is to us. So that was taken care of this past winter, winter, spring. Then we come into it now and says, okay, the Navy now for a lease property, and we've appraised it, is $42,000 per year to lease this property. So we'll be sending off before July 31, even after the mod was done, the 42,000. So what does that mean? That means that after that, though, the subsequent years, we don't, it don't have to weigh, always be cash, but for NAS Pax River and the installation, in lieu of cash, there can be projects done in lieu of. Some of the things we, I always use this example, soil, I mean, uh, erosion projects soil erosion projects on NAS PACS base if because we, you know, through our engineers and through some other projects or some in kinds, that will count towards that and once the uh, lease is signed next year for the long-term lease after it's getting through the next uh, secretary. But 42000 after it's been at no charge for 25 years, questions did come up, and the commissioners had some questions about that. Then they also, uh, before they... Uh, made the motion to approve the lease modification, made a, a motion for a letter to be sent by the commissioners to go toward Congressman Hoyer and our senators as well, uh, asking some of the reasoning what's behind all that. You're up to date on it now. Thank you. <laughs> I was surprised when I saw it. Any other questions? Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, if it's the appropriate time. I believe it is. So uh, one of the things going on in relationship to projects is the uh, soil analysis. 
Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I'd like you uh, uh, to explain to the board, uh, if you could, uh, if I'm not catching you off guard, I don't think I have, no. as to what, no. what, an update on what's going on with, with that and why. Thank you. In the infield project that we've done over this past year, year and a half, or whatever that timeline's been, we put in the new infield mix, and then we tested our infield mix, and it is still somewhat sandy, but very much better. Uh, uh, we've gotten high marks, especially from our visitors. Uh, we know who what other Calvert and Charles use. We visit those sites and know exactly what they used. Then to get that done, it's a little bit more cost, is to put clay inside of those fields. So instead of doing a lot of the fields, uh, this week coming or the next week, we're going to be having a company put in on field four at Chancellor's the clay mixture in there so we can see for ourselves. Uh, we did visit a highlighted clay mixture in Calvert. They have one field, maybe th that new field they put in. I know Chopticon High School has the clay mixture in. Great Mills and, and Leonardtown are right on par with where we are with the uh, infield mix. So we're going to see that, investigate that. Uh, we think, so here's what my goal is. I don't, I don't really think for the money you need to get it at every field. Uh, I think the fields are adequate, especially now that they're getting the TLC with the Dragon daily. But let's say if you had, we know chancellors, it, we would get that uh, already. Then we'd go to Dorsey, get those three, three fields clay ready. Then North County, 5th uh, District, and back it. And then that way, then it'd be up to the leagues to schedule whether it's their 12 and ups on those fields. And probably most likely, in, uh, maybe not quite all, but most of all of our 90s, because that's where the adults play and the, the uh, upper ages play. So that's, that's the plan why we did the analysis. Uh, the, the other one, we'll have a test field. Instead of doing six and then realizing that didn't work or we don't like it as much, we'll do the one at Chancellor's and everybody will get a chance to look at it and see what we think moving forward. And then we think we might be able to find the money with some what's left over in the project, uh, even though we still did get the hose bibs in there so we can get some irrigation. But we saved some there, and that way we can get some clay in these fields. And so for that upper level play, we'll have the field conditions. So <clears throat> in putting in uh, a greater amount of clay into the mix, mm -hmm. uh, is it going to be necessary to have uh, water available, irrigation available, in order to keep that mix uh, playable without it, it hardening up to the point that it's not going to be playable? Right. Um, we've talked with them about that too, but that's why we've got water about all of them now. And so that way we can, the, the big play areas where they are, are the um, pitcher's mound and the batter's box. And then if you need to do maybe around the bases, but they believe if you stay on top of them like we're doing now with the dragon, they don't believe so. Who's they? But uh, we've we've um, we're working with a company now. Now if we went the big project, we'd bid it out for. But this small project, we can do Dura Edge, is the name of the company. They did the field up there at Aberdeen, uh, the Ripken Field at Aberdeen, uh, and many others. When, when but there's more than one company. I'm just not touting them, but that's who we know right now. When you just mentioned the high school mix and so on and so forth, you're, you're talking about the same mix that we used before this analysis, correct? No, uh, no. in talking with um, Mr. Sapp at Chopticon, they have a higher level of, of uh, clay in their oh, clay in mix. The, mm -hmm. Oh, I see. I see. Oh, I, I, I was under the impression that, that it had come out that we were using on the Rex and Parks field, the same mix that the high schools use. So. Well, we're at Leonardtown and Great Mills, yes. Yep. But, the, but, I see. but not okay. at Chopticon. Uh -huh. They do have a beautiful field. Is there an estimate on uh, uh, what, what's, what's going to cost to do the one field at uh, Chancellor's Run? I assume it's the 60 or, or what? F four grand. Four grand. Christy wants to show this playground off. We want to show you the yeah. playground. Man, give her some give her some air time, please. He he uh <laughs>
He went a little fast, a little early, I did, but I did, we I do did. have <laughs> this is the obviously the schematics. You can see it's in the same footprint as the other one. Um, but I just wanted you to see some of the play, some of the favorite features like the little playhouse. I don't know how familiar you all are with that playground, but that was a very popular feature. So that's actually been replicated in this design. Um, and then we'll scroll over here so you can see a little bit better. This is the twirl of I was telling you that's ground level. So that spins around. There's an aero glider in the back, which is similar to what's there now. So um, it'll be a very familiar playground with a nice big facelift. This is your older kids section. Um, and when you see the stepping stones here next to where there's ramps, that's where it becomes inclusive. So a child with a disability can be in a mobility device on the structure, and then you have able-bodied children hopping right next to them. So that's how inclusive it uh, goes through. So I just wanted to give you a peek at the new equipment that's earmarked for there. Stay, stay back there for a second, Chris. Now, I know this is a graphic, but look where that tree is. So coming up, we're going to have a camera right there. What does that mean? Well, one, it's, it's safety. We cr create some prevention and also if some things happen, some damage, prosecution. But I want, so I want to highlight our IT department. One of the things about the cameras is I can, I can see in the mornings, if it's raining, we can look on cameras and decide if fields are wet and out without driving to Lancaster. We can see the field clearly at 5th District Park. The football, all those things, we, well, those are not only use a tool for just what I told you about, about um, uh, prosecution and prevention and in the gymnastics setting, the whole works, but, uh, but even those things there, because that was one of the issues. It's raining in Lexington Park, but it's not raining in 5th District. Who's telling the, but you can look at that field. You'll know if also, too, it, by 1130, the fields need to be finished there. You can look and see if they're finished and they're moved on the next one, if there's some hiccups. So Bob's done a lot for that, but it's having a lot of other effects too, more than just those um, things of, of prevention and, and prosecution. Uh, it's helping us out. Uh, so I want to say thanks to him and the IT department for the work they're being done. There's, I think we have about 12 different views or more right over here at Leonard Hall Recreation Center on the outside. Because the whole idea now is to find it and get it where you can see right to the doors where people are coming in and also where you can get ta car tags. And that's the whole uh, goal behind them. Excellent. It is. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah. So thank you, Bob. I can get through this fast. You, well, you know about the restrooms that have been completed, those parks, but let me say something. I th did I tell you all last uh, month about uh, partnership with the Arts Council? The St. Mary's Arts Council has partnered with us, and they got a grant for a $10,000 planning grant. On July 19th, they're having the public come in about their cares and what they'd like to see in the Lexington Park, Lexington Manor, Passive Park, and the Arts. So want people to know about that and be a part of it. But they also have funding. And one of the areas, that that restroom in the Lexington Manor, Passive Park, is going to have murals on all three sides, looking to even do the uh, Three Notch Theater in Tulagi Place, and might, if they have enough students, which they think they will in the funding, to also do the new restroom at at, uh, but make that a, a more arts central there at uh, Dorsey Park and even as far up as Chaptico Park. The basketball courts are looking good around. That's old there. Uh, news, uh, John back at Lancaster, 80 upgrades. Thank you for that, Chris, and you're doing an excellent job. Mr. Graves, you're on top of it because look right there, baseball in a renovation. We did 16, and the clay mix is coming at Chancers Field 4. It says June. That probably should say July, so that's on me. Um, we've done remodels at Margaret Brent and Leonard Hall. Those bathrooms make all the difference in the world. The windscreens, I hear a lot of good comments about those at our parks, especially pickleball. Roy got a great big stretch of, uh, of asphalt overlay on the trail in the northern county. Here recently, you've seen the Leonard Hall Center renovation and the court improvements we talked about. Let's flip this, and you'll see some of those. Can I stop you for a minute on the overlay at the parks? Uh -huh. uh, I, I happen to be up at the White Plains Park uh, uh, that they put in that uh, turf field. That turf field, and then they've got that uh, asphalt all the way around, so and so forth. Uh, and uh, the ADA traffic on that asphalt uh, I was extremely impressed and I'm wondering um, how much of our uh, county residents are aware of those changes 
um, in relationship to uh, going through the parks uh, now that the asphalt has been laid in a lot of areas. Yeah, and you'll see one of the pictures up here at uh, Chaptico, really nice. Well, here it is right here. Well, and I will tell you that I did a presentation for the Commission for People with Disabilities and went through all of the upgrades for ADA compliance oh, at the different parks, had a nice little presentation and gave out a lot of information. So that'll be shared with, with the citizens as well. How, how can we get that out, uh, Ms. Bishop? Uh, to, uh, can, it, can it go out to, uh, um, I mean, is it going to go out to like the Loftner Center, uh, Senior Centers, and, and these types of things in order to, uh, um, you know, VFWs, American Legion Posts, you know, the, you know different organizations that have uh, aging uh, uh, memberships, you follow what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I can uh, definitely that follow aware up that, with you. Know, that, you know, that the accessibility, uh, to just go into the park is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good, some good graphics and a mailing and then a Facebook and all the other things we do. That's Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I want to look at that the picture at 5th District Parking Lot Lights. That's not too exciting. It actually looks like wintertime and it's getting ready to snow to me. But when you've been back there before, if you've been back there and it was the only lights were on were on them fields, it was dark. That's an incredible look all throughout there now in the parking lot to get that uh, uh, project done there for them. There you have it. The, and then if you look in this, uh, the fencing over there at Cardinal Gibbons, the tennis courts there, those, when we just did those recently, I was there, I think I was there 4th of July. Um, we did um, pickleball courts there as well. So they have pickleball courts uh, right there. Well, there they are on the bottom of the page. And then the Hollywood Recreation Center, that, that was a big addition for the uh, child care program and summer camp program there at Hollywood. And then we also did a renovation on that ball field out back. Leonard Hall once again. Seventh District basketball court. Come on now. That looks like Dr. J or something getting ready to play there. <laughs> and <laughs> that, that, that make me old when I use the name Dr. J. What does that do? <laughs> and uh, you see some of the great work Christy and Roy are doing with our transition plan about ADA improvements. All of our bleachers now, picnic tables, they're abutted to sidewalks, so it's just automatic. If you look back at those bleachers, let's pull these bleachers. You see them at Leonard Hall right there in the top screen? So with the gap between those two sets of bleachers, that gives you two wheelchairs inside there and one on each end that you have field wheelchairs at the lower bench seating level with your family, just like anybody else, and it's just automatic as far as, uh, as far as the accessibility. So those are the things that I have to, I have to admit it and say it, that Christie's trained me on in the last 20 years. <laughs> We've had an upgrade picture of that since that one that uh, you would see full grass green there at field six be ready for September, October. And then the, the lights are there. That'll be more for multi-purpose practicing. Just the one field there. We wanted to get uh, baseballs extended their seasons. They recently got a new set of lights there. They're going to get the retrofit on the 90, but keeping everybody on this side, on the multi-sport uh, side will be good. Christy, is there a fence on the back? You don't have that one. because it, It's not in the pictures, and, but it has been put on the playground. And then uh, the one at Lancaster is going to be encased by what, 90% with fencing? Yes. Or would you say 80? Uh, we'd, we'll, we'll say 80 to 90%. How about that? Parents mm -hmm. love that uh, mm -hmm. fencing around, the vinyl fencing around there. And there's your budget. Okay. Any questions? Everyone good? Okay. Looks like next on the agenda, we have a wrestling community engagement. There's still two of those. Remember the, your last meeting, there and was then, wrestling. Mm -hmm. And then track and, and field. And track and field. Track and field, we I haven't had any conversations with them, waiting for the reach out. I've met with uh, wrestling, and then I have a meeting with wrestling tomorrow. Okay. I've met with... Uh, um, we're talking about, we talked about a lot of things, but the main one is is just what we can do to make sure they're, they're, uh, they're standing up now. Because this is what I want to say to the public in any uh, youth sports group. Really, the only, you take baseball, softball, and soccer in the, in the multi-sport fields, really you're, you're talking about a facility 
using uh, and the sports leagues use them, give them a play, effective and safe playing area. So if you go to indoor sports, it's the same thing. But there's a difference. Indoor sports has always required a fee to go along with that, whether you rent the public schools or utilize the public schools, Carver, anywhere there's a fee associated with that, with automatic uh, utilities and staffing being there. Um, so that's the difference. So if you want to, recreation parks facilities, school facilities, there's costs with those, but there's not much I can do there. And I told you at our last meeting, for instance, gymnastics for 25 years paid out over $2 million for a facility. Uh, so that's a lot of rental costs there. So with putting that in mind, just trying to find ways that it's affordable, the, the, that's uh, sites surrounding the county, but wrestling is a good wellness sport. Uh, uh, wrestling's a good um, uh, uh, discipline sport, which all of them are, but you know the sport of wrestling, if you haven't gone those three minutes, you haven't done anything for three minutes since you tried wrestling. And um, so excited about a conversation with them, and I'll keep you posted. I have a meeting, another meeting tomorrow. Great. Well, my, my, my impression with, with uh, both presentations were that uh, – their main objective was that was housing and some or mm -hmm. the access to a place that they can grow from, for lack of a better word. Right. But uh, in in the uh, the wrestling area, uh, they used to have access. I think I think that's what I was getting at. They used to have access to uh, Margaret Brent Annex, mm -hmm. and then uh, because um, the mat right wasn't. You know, That's right. It wasn't maintained, so on and so mm -hmm. forth. So if, if they found an avenue to solve that that big problem, I think they mm -hmm. put a tag of seven grand on it, whatever, uh, would Margaret Brent then become available to them on some basis or or is it something that's, uh, you know, that's sort of gone away now because it's being used elsewhere and, and there's not going to be any room. Well, yeah, we talked about all those facilities, and let me give you an example. Go just to the opposite in the county down there, Carver, or Carver Recreation Center. It wasn't long ago that um, Cougars Cheerleading was in there. Same thing. They they set them up under the model of, of um, Volunteer Youth Sports League, affiliated, utilizing county space. Then they also went over to the Gymnastics Center and got shared space in there. They paid for that just like the, uh, the gymnastics students did, but they paid for the use of that. Then at Carver, there was a fee. Then they were allowed to store their mats. Plus, that is a uh, climate-controlled area, so that worked out very well. They have moved on to a private, uh, the volunteer that was in charge, you know, turned it over to a private company, which, which is no issue for us. But so the same thing, if it's available, that's exactly what can happen. But there is rentals there, the equipment's theirs but we can make room for somebody if the space is there. Mm -hmm. Are the and mats at the, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Are the mats at the gymnasium center, or are they similar to the wrestling mats? No. No. Mm -hmm. It's been a lot of years. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Well, I think that's it for the agenda. Um, board members, anything else? If not, I'd like to go around the horn for your final comments. We'll start with you, Mr. DeGraves. Well, I'm not going to be here next month. Oh, okay. I don't want any clapping, screaming, and hollering. No, we'll miss you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to Montana That's to exciting. a dude ranch. Oh, Yellowstone. <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, uh, with uh, a lot of family members, and, and uh, <clears throat> I've increased my insurance. Oh. For when I get back for cardiac treatments. <laughs> I hope uh, not. Barely the back and the rest of me, but just me the too. heart itself. But uh, I look to have a lot of fun. Uh, so uh, I'll give you an update in September, I guess. Okay. Uh, Sounds lovely. If I'm able to walk in here or some other way. Okay. I'm good. Thank good? You. Okay. I just uh, appreciate the updates from Mr. Shepard and appreciate uh, from the public school system the uh, working relationship and uh, progress that we've made uh, together over the last few years. So, uh, again, appreciate the update and, and the partnership that's um, been fruitful for, I think, both sides. Great. Thank you. Uh, I don't really have anything to share except for I will also miss next month's meeting in August. Wow. Okay. 
I have nothing. Will you be here next next month? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All right. I would just like to close with, um, again, a thank you to Mr. Shepard and to Christy for keeping us on track here and giving us all the good luck updates. And also, um, remember, there's a lot of teen trips out there and tickets available for different parks and um, amusement parks. So don't forget to support that way as well. Thanks. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All right. Second. All in favor? Aye. Great. Good job tonight. Thanks.